Hello, my name is Bill Helton. I'm a senior solutions architect here at AWS. Today we're going to be discussing using the ranged export for the AWS Snow family. If you have not, I recommend working with your account team to determine whether the AWS Snow family or AWS DataSync best meets your migration requirements. Based on your on-prem destination resources, your account team will aid with an initial Snow family proof of concept to determine how many Snow devices are ideal. This is a busy slide, but I want to emphasize single jobs compared with parallel jobs as well as service limits. In general, it takes two days to fill an AWS Snowball Edge. With a single job, if you select a bucket to export without a range and your default service limit is two, the copy will start in order, taking two days, then we ship the device before moving to copy to the second AWS Snowball Edge, as you can see with the magenta highlight on day three. Also note on day eight, as highlighted by the magenta highlight, that the fourth AWS Snowball Edge does not start its copy until the first AWS Snowball Edge is received back at AWS, as this is due to the service limit. With parallel jobs, you select the range for each AWS Snowball Edge. This will allow multiple AWS Snowball Edges to copy in parallel. As you can see with the magenta highlight on day three, three AWS Snowball Edges are shipped instead of the single job, which ships the third AWS Snowball Edge on day seven. Most customers can copy four to eight AWS Snowball Edge simultaneously. So parallel jobs can decrease the time to receive data as capacity is scaled. The result in this case is that the customer has the data copied onto their system three days sooner with a parallel job compared to a single job. A more extreme example would be with a service limit of five, where the customer would complete copying the data to their system on day eight with a parallel job, while the single job would complete the copy to the on-premise equipment on day 15. I mentioned it takes approximately two days to copy from Amazon S3, our simple storage service, to an AWS Snowball Edge. This, of course, requires the data to be in Amazon S3. If the data is in Amazon EFS, our Elastic File System, or on an Amazon EC2 instance, our Elastic Compute Cloud, this data will need to be copied from that service or instance into Amazon S3. The copy speed from Amazon S3 to the AWS Snowball Edge and from the AWS Snowball Edge to your on-premise destination depends greatly on the number and size of objects. We recommend compressing via zip or tar objects of less than one megabyte. As mentioned before, it's important to work with your account team to determine your Snow family capabilities, but most customers can manage four to eight devices simultaneously. These are the steps we're going to take in the AWS console. Let's move on to the console. As you can see, I've connected to my AWS console. I have zoomed into the upper right. Notice in the upper right that I'm in the Northern Virginia region. Please select the region you would like to transfer data from. I am typing Snowball in the search bar. And you can see it brings up AWS Snow Family. I select the AWS Snow Family. I am going to select Order an AWS Snow Family Device. This provides the options to import into Amazon S3, export from Amazon S3, local compute and storage only, or import virtual tapes into AWS Storage Gateway. I'm going to select export from Amazon S3, then click next. Please note, the default service limit is one AWS Snow Family device. If you need to adjust this, please contact AWS support. Also, additional documentation and resources are provided via links. I'm going to acknowledge I have read the information above and select next.
My default address is preselected, but you have the option of changing the shipping address as well as the shipping speed. I will leave the default address and shipping speed of one day, then select Next. I am going to provide a job name. I'm going to call it Export Test. I'm going to leave it as the default choice, which is the Snowball Edge Storage Optimized. I'm going to leave it as an Amazon S3 data transfer, but note you do have the option of an NFS-based data transfer. The next section is to choose your S3 storage. I'm going to select my text range bucket and then add a key range. The key range is going to be logs as both the start and the end range. To signify that I want everything in this prefix of logs to be copied. I'm going to add an additional key range. From this same source bucket, I'm going to type security slash capital A, and then security slash capital M. The UTF-8 ranges are numbers first, uppercase letters next, lowercase letters after that, and finally special characters. In my example, again, we will have everything under the prefix of logs, as well as everything under the security prefix that starts with a capital A through capital M. We will not have any data copied starting with a number, an uppercase N through uppercase Z, any lowercase letter or special characters. I'm going to confirm. I'm going to skip the compute AMI as well as the green grass and select next. This screen is the configuration selections for encryption as well as the service role to access the data and copy it to the SNOW device. These are both required. When you select create a service role, it will pop up the permissions required. You then have the option to allow the SNOW console to create the service linked role, or you can choose to add an existing. I'm going to leave the default, which is to allow the SNOW console to create the role and select next. This screen is for notifications on job status. If you have an existing SNS topic, which is our Amazon Simple Notification Service, select it. Otherwise, create new and provide an email address. I'm going to use the existing SNS topic and then select Next. We can review all our selections to this point. We can cancel, select a previous screen, or if satisfied, choose Create Job. I hope that you find this video helpful and thank you so much for watching.